The premise of our conversation is this quote from William Walker Atkinson. An interesting thing about the cultivation of a mental attitude is that not only does the improved mental attitude tend to impress itself upon others with whom you come in contact, but that it also tends to impress itself upon your own mentality so that you gradually become more and more fixed in the mental attitude. As stated in the Hermetica, we were given two gifts, speech and mind. And with speech, a person can create any kind of life that they want. Now, one of the things that I teach all throughout these videos, and if you're a student of my subconscious mind program, you know that I emphasize, if experiences are brought to the surface, as in our outer world reflects certain beliefs that we would call limiting, what we want to do is acknowledge you are not the experience, that you are formless, and from this formless self, you can acknowledge empowering ideas that you would consider to be ideal, relating with others. And which he says here, every time you say or think I, you assert the existence of yourself and its presence in consciousness without any meaning, without any form. And from this formless self, you can acknowledge empowering ideas as you acknowledge these ideas and you encourage them. And one of the ways we do this is through auto-suggestion. These become our beliefs and the occurrence of how it was in our past, which we could call restrictive or limiting, does not happen again. The power is the recognition of the formless self. In that moment, we also recognize that we were identifying with beliefs of how we see ourselves to be, how we see others to be, and the relationship that forms accordingly. Others play out the theater of what we consciously or subconsciously say I am too. There is no need to dwell on the past, in this moment now is where all your power resides. As a matter of fact, that's where all your power has been. In this moment, you become conscious and aware to a higher degree of what you truly desire and how you want to experience your relationships with others. You can see yourself in your imagination relating with others, ideally. You could suggest to yourself, I am that person now. Because all that the I consents to now reflects as the outer world as experience. Mind is blank, and you could fill it up with any kind of speech that you'd like. For many years of my life, I didn't realize that I was identifying and creating the same experiences in friendships, relationships, with others in general, that would be from the perspective of what I would call unnecessary conflict. And at a certain point in the journey, specifically when I came across Think and Grow Rich in 2004, and he spoke about the subconscious mind and auto-suggestion, I realized exactly what was going on. I realized that I had these beliefs that I had formed in relation to past experiences in my childhood, in my teenage years, in which they were playing out again as theater and how I was relating with the other person. As stated, we're given the two gifts, speech and mind. You put in your mind, via your inner speech, exactly how it is that you want to live, and the power of the subconscious mind makes it all happen in ways that we might not know, unknown ways. So again, the idea is to, if those beliefs are brought to the surface, recognize that we are not those beliefs, that we are, in essence, formless. 
And from there, what do we say I am to? Our mental attitude. How do we see others and ourselves ideally? That when we consent to that, in this moment, now, everything changes. So here's an example in my experience. I used to teach these workshops for iris reading. They started in 2010. They're speed reading workshops. By the way, I've also done a discussion with Paul from Iris Reading. I'll put a link in the description to information regarding speed reading. Now, one of the benefits of doing these workshops, and I did them while I was running my IT business, it allowed me to reveal beliefs that I was subconsciously associating with, limiting beliefs, or beliefs that are no longer resonant to me. And so I wouldn't dwell on them. I wouldn't shame myself. I wouldn't condemn myself. All I would do is bring conscious awareness onto these beliefs. And then I would ask myself the question, how do I desire to see myself ideally in relation to these beliefs? And beliefs would be brought to the surface. People accept me. They appreciate the value that I have. They are interested in receiving the benefits. They produce success from a place of flow and ease. This is a phenomenal workshop that shall forever change their life for the better. As a matter of fact, I still receive emails from students of the workshops that I taught in 2010 who have now moved into their careers who have now developed an ability to process information, large volumes of complex information, to degrees way higher than before them taking that workshop, all proving an equation that others show up in the same way we imagine them to show up. And so the way the changes had occurred was to apply auto-suggestion, which is to acknowledge the attributes that I would consider to be desirable in relating with others. Acknowledge it. That's what an auto-suggestion is. You are that person now. Anytime we apply auto-suggestion, we are associating to the formless self I that this is how we are now. I am complete inside. Other people accept me. I love what I do. Everywhere I go, I'm in flow, and others reflect accordingly. People want to be around me. These are all conscious associations. And you know what those are for you. You go within yourself, and you discover how you truly desire to live in a way that feels authentic to you. And the benefit for me, as mentioned, from teaching these workshops was that these beliefs were given the opportunity to be brought to the surface. As they were revealed, I made peace with them. Again, as he says here, every time you say or think I, you assert the existence of yourself and its presence in consciousness. And I is awareness. And whatever you identify with, think feelingly in your imagination. You associate to that I, as he says here. Each person is constantly surrounded with what has been called an atmosphere composed of mental and emotional vibrations, which are emanated from the personality. So the personality in which we suggested the meaning to ourselves in regards to the life experiences, which has formed the personality. However, the personality is not the I. The I transcends the personality. And as the I transcends the personality, the I can change the personality by identifying with whatever personality attributes. Create a list of attributes of how you see yourself ideally. Write the auto-suggestions down. Such as, for example, there's a book called The Charisma Myth by Olivia Fox Cabane, in which she found three important aspects in regards to charisma. Power, which is direction, presence, 
as in being present in a conversation with a person, being there in the now, engaged in the conversation, feeling a very flow-based energy between those that you're communicating with, and warmth, compassion, empathy, understanding. So if those are desirable attributes, you would write, I know what I want. I have direction. I know where I'm going. My life is purposeful. I am on purpose. And present, I enjoy this moment. I live in bliss. I feel flow. And warmth, I understand others. I feel what others mean. I understand the deeper aspects of nonverbal communication. I understand the meaning behind the words. So again, going back here. Every time you say or think I, you assert the existence of yourself, formless self, and its presence in consciousness. So what do we say I am of? What are we conscious of via autosuggestion? Perhaps the ones I just suggested. And that is what we are saying I am too, inside. And so we're taught that the outer world is consciousness reflected, as in the outer is playing out, as he says here. Each person is constantly surrounded with what has been called an atmosphere. These are the effects, the experiences with others, the energy, the vibe. Those are the effects of the attributes that we identify with, that which we say I am too. And when we acknowledge those attributes, they become the subconscious beliefs and the previous subconscious beliefs of the past, which we could call limiting or restrictive, creating inharmonious relationships with others, no longer exist. And the experience with others changes. It has to, because the change occurred within. And there's only one cause inside. I am. And so as mentioned, mind is blank, and we could fill it up with conscious inner speech, inspiration, intuition, like an artist or an inventor does, from creative imagination. Draw from within how you truly desire to live. And I would consider that to be conscious use of the two gifts, speech and mind. I is transcendent to the speech. And we have a blank mind, which we can fill with any kind of speech. And more specifically, in this conversation, we're speaking of speech, of how we see ourselves in relationship with others. Recognize that if others related with you in a certain way in the past, which we can call limiting or restrictive, all power exists now based on what we consciously consent to inside. What we say I am to now. That's how we are now. In which the effects from that reflect accordingly. And characteristics that we discover through inspiration, connecting with people that we find inspirational, who have certain attributes, which we want to further encourage and acknowledge within ourselves, or shutting out the five senses. Go within and find the attributes. Napoleon Hill called this in Think and Grow Rich, creative imagination going beyond this five-sensory experience and recognizing there's an infinite world within in which the outer world is sourced from anyways. And so when it comes to states of being and how it relates with others, how our relationships are with others, we take the responsibility inside. We identify with ideal attributes of how we see ourselves ideally, in which then everything else happens automatically. And so three important distinctions that I would like to further explore from his work. Number one, if firmly defined and as firmly held, impresses itself upon everything around them. And by firmly, via autosuggestion, the subconscious mind holds it firmly, in which then nothing needs to be done. No more conscious effort is required. Everything happens automatically. It has become a subconscious belief. And that seed, when expressed, plays out as the theater in relationship with others. 
how we are, how they are, everything happens automatically. As he says here, impresses itself upon everything around them. Number two, looks grow to conform, voice, walk, general appearance, all grow to reflect the inner states of mind. So a person might notice, based on the attributes that they identify with, let's say power, presence, and warmth, their voice may start to change, how they walk, how they carry themselves. All authentically grow out of the seed that has been planted in mind. Conscious thought. All of that happens automatically in ways that we might not know. We leave that up to the power of the subconscious mind. We're taught to select the attributes of how we consciously desire to be in relationship with others via autosuggestion in which the expressions from that shall authentically reflect as ideal. So voice, walk, general appearance, body language, what we say, how we say, all grow to reflect our attitude of mind, in which you have full preference. You don't need my approval. You don't need anyone's approval. You know how you want to be. Write down those statements. Suggest to yourself that you are that person now, and you'll observe these changes. This has been the case with me over the years. I've noticed this. This has been the case with everyone that I've worked with. The power is acknowledging that you are your ideal now, whatever that means to you in your relationships with others. Those attributes are what we are associating to the formless self, giving form in our imagination. And body is an expression of mind. The outer world is an expression of of what we consciously and subconsciously consent of our formless self to be. As we consent now to the ideal attributes, those become our subconscious beliefs. And how about the beliefs of the past? What we have identified with in the past? Well, we're taught not to dwell and to live from our ideal. So that's an important distinction. Live from our ideal. When I go back to my experiences that I had, this is what facilitated my changes in personal relationships, business relationships, friendships, relating with others in general. Because we are suggesting what all our experiences mean to us. And I always encourage seeing yourself from the perspective of love, seeing others from the perspective of love. And so in relation number three, the mental atmosphere becomes so charged with certain vibrations that those who come in contact will actually feel this mental attitude and adjust themselves to it. So again, we're taught to imagine lovingly, live from the heart, live how you truly desire to live, listen to yourself, trust yourself, follow your heart in your intuition, discover within yourself the attributes, how you desire to live in relationship with others. And we feel it. Feeling is the secret. As we identify with these attributes, we think feelingly, we feel it as our atmosphere, as our energy. Others show up and may comment on our energy. It feels so great to be around you. I feel so comfortable around you. I feel like you understand me. I feel inspired around you. And those are the effects of what we identify with. As he says here, each person is constantly surrounded with what has been called an atmosphere composed of mental and emotional vibrations, which are emanated from the personality. The atmosphere of each person depends upon the general character of the thoughts and feelings of the person in question. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's go ahead and conclude this with an auto-suggestion to further encourage. We could say, I recognize my ability to find within the ideal attributes of how I truly desire to live. I recognize as I identify with these attributes, body is an expression of mind. All experience is an expression of mind. As others show up in harmonious relationships to further encourage the attributes that I encourage within myself. I have the ability to identify with any characteristic, any attribute, and I find within myself what I truly love, what I truly desire, 
and allow myself to be, which is reflected as others acknowledging those attributes in me in the form of harmonious ideal relationships. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.